what you value, your children will value. What you spend your money on, your children will want to spend their money on. It's just your modeling. Thinking through, I mean, this whole day, idea of books, I, let's be clear, especially in terms of education, some parents might be saying, well, my kids do read books, but they read textbooks. You're not <laughs> talking about textbooks. No, I'm talking about books where your child wants to read them under a cover with a flashlight. That's great, what we're looking great for. Great definition. Good definition. <laughs> and and I, I don't know any high school or junior high or elementary school kid that wants to read a textbook, textbook under the covers of no. the flashlight. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because yeah. so, I mean, so there's so much of modern education seems to be in, the, in textbooks and worksheets and, yeah. you know, those yeah. kind of things. And it, it, I think if parents sit back and reflect a little bit, the, that, the kids don't enjoy that. Um, yeah. it, it's, it becomes so tedious yeah. and, and you, and you watch your kid in that, you know, kind of, kind of get exposed to that year after year after year. And it just seems like a lot of kids today, particularly by the time they're fifth, sixth, seventh grade, they, they, they've lost the love of learning yes. and is it, are, are books a way that, that we can help them preserve that love of learning? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It is the way. Um, and it's so simple. And, you know, some libraries, even though they're closed, will bring books out to your car if you order them. So hopefully it even can be completely free. It doesn't have to cost any money. It just costs investment in our children. And we love our children, let's face it. And we'll, we'll take a bullet for our children. So when I say to you, I want you to read your kids, let's, let's aim for 45 minutes a day at first. And, and, I don't know any parent that wouldn't say, well, I can do that. And then eventually you're reading more and more, maybe a couple times a day and then at lunch or after lunch, after dinner, before bed, you know, you build it into your day. And of course the key is daddy reading out loud. And uh, the wonderful thing about dads working from home now is that they can fit in this reading time with their families a little bit more easily. But even, you know, when I have traveled the world and I say to people, okay, so maybe, maybe daddy's flying to China for work, but he brings his little book that you're reading with him. And then he FaceTimes at your bedtime, maybe not his bedtime in China, but there's a way to make this happen. When there's a will, there is a way. And what you value, your children will value. What you spend your money on, your children will want to spend their money on. It's just your modeling that mm -hmm. first you read to your kids and then you be a reader yourself mm -hmm. and then you build a literary environment in your home. And those are the things that will really contribute to making your children lifelong learners. And the, um, the National Endowment for the Arts under Dana Joya uh, did research on this and they found that the number of books found in a child's childhood home was directly statistically related to the level of academic success that they had in their future life. If there were few books, there was little success. If there were many books, there was great success. It was in every case studied and it had nothing to do with the educational level of the parent or the financial you know, security of the home. None of that mattered. The only thing that mattered were the number of books found in the person's childhood home.